In the summer of 1964, Andy Goodman got training in how to register African Americans to vote as part of the growing civil rights movement in America. People should be expected to get beaten. They should expect to spend in jail, and it may go beyond the summer when they're in jail, and that they should expect possibly somebody to get killed. Then he traveled to Mississippi and wrote this postcard to say that he had arrived safely. The people in this city are wonderful, he wrote, and our reception was very good. The postmark, June 21st, 1964. That was the same day Goodman and fellow civil rights workers James Cheney and Mickey Schwerner went missing. They were stopped by the police, accused of speeding. They were put in jail and they were not allowed to make a phone call and they were released at night. They got back in the car and uh, the Ku Klux Klan nabbed them. For well, the latest on the search for the three missing boys. The men's disappearance made national headlines. President Lyndon Johnson ordered federal agents to Mississippi. I asked Hoover last two weeks ago, after talking to the Attorney General, to fill up Mississippi with FBI men and infiltrate everything he could. What did they think happened? Think they got killed? Uh, this morning they had absolutely no trace. There's no sign of the automobile. They have found nobody who's uh, seen the uh, car or the three people. So as far as they're concerned, they just disappeared from uh, the face of the earth. It wasn't until August 4th, 1964, that their bodies were found. What you just seen there was some footage from 1964 of the civil rights workers that were ending up murdered. James Cheney, uh, Mickey or Michael Schwarner and uh, uh, Andrew Goodman. They went down there to see about the movement, the freedom movement is what they call to try to register uh, voters there in Mississippi and in, in the South. And, and this, this movement and a church was burnt down because they were registering voters. And some of you that are subscribed to me are old enough to know was alive when this was happening. And you know, the reason why I'm making this video, this is serious. I don't know if I could, I don't, if I could squeeze everything in in one video. I may have to do a couple of it to just stretch it out uh, so that it's just not excessively long. But, you know, I, when I, as I thought about this about a month or so ago about this, and I thought, you know, it grieves my heart because that story, if you, if you out there, those of you that are younger, if you've never seen the movie Mississippi Burning, you need to watch that. This is something of history that gets brushed aside and people don't talk about it. These are the types of things that our society needs to confront because it still goes on a whole lot in this nation, this underlying uh, wound that we need to try to you know, unveil and, and try to get some healing in society off of, of, of what's going on with this racism and all of these grievances that are going on. And I mean, and Mississippi is a hotbed for racism that has went on. I mean, during that, what you saw there in the beginning of that clip, that you see them young kids sitting there and the guys telling them expect to be beaten and possibly murdered because you, this is what they desire. Me and my daughter was talking about that. I said, I guess you had to be there because you, at this time and now, you'd be like, I don't know. I'm not going to put my life on a line. I, you know, but if if that's what it's about, if you want to do what's right in, in, in society and try to do what's right for people and you tired of seeing people being taken advantage of and used and abused and the murders that go on and things that uh, at that time, the lynchings and people that's being treated inhumane. I mean... You know, props to these young people that went out there and stood for something that I mean that I mean, they stood at a time when most people would go on the run and wouldn't have nothing to do with it. Traveling down south. I mean, I've told you, for those of you that follow me, my aunt lived in the Alabama and had to leave because of the Ku Klux Klan. And so. And I've got family. My mother was born in a small town in Mississippi. And on that particular day, we're going to look at some more footage of this because I want you to see how these folks, where their mindset was. And I'm going to link it to where we're going as far as on a spiritual message of everything. But I'm going to link it. But let's look at some more of the footage of when the federal agents and everyone was there looking for the bodies of these three civil rights workers. Take a look. 
Late this afternoon, the search for a Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner shifted to the Pearl River near Philadelphia, Mississippi. Boats carrying game wardens and FBI agents are now dragging the river. Have you seen the uh, spot down here, sir? That's right. What do you think of this? I believe him joke was planned and sitting off up in New York laughing at us Mississippi folks. Can you tell me what you think of this whole thing? Well, I believe it's a big publicity hoax, but if they're dead, I feel like they asked for it. Thousands of law enforcement agents for 44 days were looking for my brother's body and James and Mickey. They dredged out of the swamps nine black bodies who no one had even heard of. There is multiple levels of tragedy in this story. One of them that is most poignant for me, besides losing my brother, was that it took two white kids to legitimize the tragedy of being murdered if you wanted to vote. And as you can see there, you see the lady. Oh, she more so, you know, they're, oh, the one guy, he's, uh, uh, I think they're in New York laughing at us. You know, these arrogance, and she's saying they deserve it. And comments, and even in the comments of this uh, on YouTube, there, there's people that are saying they shouldn't have been there to begin with. Still the racism drives deep. And then if you catch that, there was nine bodies Drug out of the water unknown. They didn't even know who they were. Could you imagine how many more bodies when Emmett Till was lynched? Long before that, they found bodies in the Mississippi out there in the river of bodies that just happened to be found. Could you? Have, so the Klan was just wreaking this kind of havoc in, 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 in within for decades, you know, for a long time in things for what they were doing. And yet you had young people, people that wanted to go and take that head on and do what was right. And give, I think it said when I was researching, it said something maybe five percent or something people of, of blacks can vote in Mississippi, which didn't make a difference because the Klan ran everything and they didn't want anybody to interfere with what they had going on. And I mean, that's this crazy and things. But I want you to look at some more footage here of the wife of, I think it's Michael, yeah, Mickey, Mickey's wife. And we'll take a look at that. I want you to see the strength that she had. And she made it known that if it wasn't for the two white guys dying, James Cheney would have been another one that was this in the river and never to be or in a river or somewhere buried never to be heard of again. Look at her and her strength. In Meridian, the wife of missing Mickey Schwerner, Rita Schwerner, flew from Oxford. Rita Schwerner plays an important role here. This is her husband, after all, who's the leader of the three missing men. And she puts a face on them. And she plays an enormous role in making this seem like these are real people and we need to pay attention to these real people whom something terrible has happened to. They're being held somewhere or something happened and uh, I am going to find the answer. If this means driving every back road, every dirt road, every alley in the county of Neshoba, I will do it. The press swarmed all over her. And I think they wanted her to cry and they wanted her to be a new widow that they would catch her at the moment of her widowhood and she wouldn't play. I personally suspect that if Mrs. Mr. Cheney, who is a native Mississippian Negro, had been along at the time of the disappearance, that this case, like so many others who have, that have come before, would have gone completely unnoticed. I did have some sense that if the story w was allowed to deteriorate into, oh, this poor little white girl, that um, it, it would um, it would be offensive to everyone concerned. And as you see that, as you see that, look at the pictures of the guys when it was time to go to trial because the court, the state, 
didn't want to charge nobody with nothing when they found the bodies and things. And they didn't want to do, do anything. But the government ended up filing civil rights charges and nobody did more than six years. No Marty were murder and things like that until this investigative reporter came on the scene and, and, and the main head guy, as you see right here, let's look at the footage as you see the- Jerry record. Mitchell, an investigative reporter in Jackson, Mississippi, began looking at the case again in the late 80s. Jerry Mitchell is a, a unique, wonderful hero. He said, this is unfair. Just like what Andy said, he found evidence and- Thanks to Mitchell's reporting, the state reopened the case and in 2005, Ku Klux Klan preacher Ray Edgar Killen went to trial for the killings. Killen was found guilty of manslaughter. Now 89, he is serving 60 years in prison. And that's him. That's him as an old man. Now look at the picture. I want you to see him as a young man. That's him as a young man. He was a bat. He was a preacher. He was a Baptist preacher. Edgar Ray Killen. He was a KKK preacher. We've talked about that. He was a preacher. And a lot of them, they all went to church on Sunday. That lady that was saying, oh, they probably, they, they shouldn't have been here. They, they you know, they, they're dead. You know, they shouldn't have been here. She probably goes to the church, probably married to one of them types of people at that time. And they go to church, had their Bibles, doing all of that. And it's Edgar Ray Killen. All these years later, ends up dying in prison eventually. But the strength of, of the wife, when she sat there and knew that she had to be strong, but at the same time, she didn't want pity in such a way to make it look like it was poor, this poor little white girl or whatever. She wanted to let the world know that these workers, you know, that they, that they, that James is just as important as everybody. And you see, and this is where I'm getting ready to go with this. It's because I was thinking as I was thinking, I said, you know, the Edgar Ray Killen, the Baptist preacher, the one that was, he was he probably knew some scriptures inside and out, got up there on Sunday mornings, but they had so much hate within their heart. Hate. These, and, and, and think, and you go back and we talk about, as you hear a lot of these nationalist people talk about America was founded as a Christian nation and all of these various things, but all many slave owners, Call themselves. They went to church in the morning, on Sunday mornings, because they, because they, I mean, they were their hearts were wicked. They can go to church on Sunday morning and come right out and lynch somebody or beat them, tie them to a tree and beat them. So this is this these folks' mindset. But you know what? And, and, and this is what I thought about. We have some modern day Edgar Ray Killings out there right now, and. You know who they are? There are a lot of these nationalist people that preachers and teachers and no, they're not lynching people physically. No, they're not torturing people um, like they did many of the people back in them days, as, such as Emmett Till, when they tortured him in a barn and, and a witness heard the screaming and things. And they the way that they did that young boy at his, as a teenager and things based upon a false accusation from the lady that claimed he whistled at her and things and stuff. No, they're not doing it that way. But what they're doing, they're lynching and killing people spiritually. And that's what I thought. Edgar Ray Killen lives on right now because when you go back and look at Paul, uh, when we were talking about um, Warwick, where Back here, if you look at this footage right here, they, and it's still today, they intend for, they don't believe everybody ha should have a right to vote. Be, and they don't believe in democracy either. So that's then come back up. They don't believe in none of that. They don't believe that everyone should have a right to vote. Don't believe me listening to Paul Wyrick right now. They never have been from the beginning of our country and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Since the election, Republican state lawmakers have introduced over 250 bills in 43 states to limit voter access. The law bans the use of ballot drop boxes and allows the state legislature to take over local election boards. They're going to vote for Trump whether you like it or not. You got no choice. 
we are seeing rejection rates from anywhere between 25 to 40 percent. Uh, if, in fact, the moral fabric of a society has disintegrated. Myrick commissioned a manifesto which describes in detail how a Christian elite will take power in America by waging an insurrectionist war. The manifesto is the purest distillation of Weyrich's ideas that we have. They felt that the political arena was inadequate. They weren't guaranteed of winning elections. And in fact, played by the rules, they would lose more and more elections unless they figured out some detours. The Council for National Policy and the folks who were coordinating their attempts to maintain control decided that they couldn't use the institutions. They needed to delegitimate and destroy them. Many of their publications say our goal is to bring down the federal government as we know it. I mean, what is this image? Trump is God's chaos candidate. What are they doing to the American flag? They're shredding it, right? That's what's going on here. They're shredding it. So yes, it's, it's been a, a declaration of internal warfare. And this is still, I've got footage that I can show you that there's people in this nationalist movement that are talking about everyone should not have a right to vote. And you know what? And more proof of it is, is J.D. Vance. He has said it more so people that don't have the childless cat lady type talk, people that don't have kids or whatever, basically don't have an investment into society. So really, you shouldn't have much word or anything to say about it. So you shouldn't be allowed to vote. That's where their mindset is. This is crazy. And see, and see the Edgar Ray killings in them still live on. They want to block people. Now, not only just minorities, but now it's women or it's anybody, whether you're white, black, blue, purple, or whatever, anybody that does not have the same color in my, I mean, not the same color, but the same ideology as them, which is a Christian. They want to impose a theocracy over America. They think that this thing should be take away freedom. They think democracy gives too much freedom. So we don't need freedom anymore. We need this theocracy. We need things to be Christian, crystallized in every area. So we're going to do away with all the rules and regulations of everything. And you're going to follow Christian nationalism the way that we want it. Just like Nick Fuentes says it right here. That is precisely what we intend to do, is to impose Christian laws on everyone in the United States of America. That is what we have to do as Christians. There should only be Christian countries, and that is because Christianity is correct. Some might say everybody is entitled to their own opinion, and every everybody can express their own religion, and so people can have their own countries. And I would agree with that if Christianity weren't true, but we know that it is. And so if that's the case, why should other countries be allowed to be wrong? Why, why should countries persist? Why should there be governments and peoples in a world where they want to be wrong? We have all these countries that are going to just empty out into hell when they go away. Uh, these countries are just places where the floor opens up and everybody falls into hell and they die? Uh, no, I, no, I don't actually think that's a good idea at all. So we'll start with America. I think America is a good start. We're going to reclaim America for Christ, retake America for Christians. And if people have a problem with that, they can, you know, they can stay and live under it or they can go somewhere else where they have different rules. And then we're going to follow you to those countries and we're going to make those countries the same way, and you are going to become a Christian. Uh, and if you don't, well, you're just going to have to live in a Christian world. But that's really the only way that it should be. That's that's the that's the guy. He was at the White House. He went there to meet. I mean, well, he went to Mar-a-Lago. He went to meet with Kanye West and was there um, to uh, 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 to talk to Trump. I mean, these people, there's plenty of Nick Fuentes. He's what you would call a white nationalist. 
and a Christian nationalist is kind of, they cross the intermix in a lot of ways. And I'm not saying, and I need to clear this up. I'm not saying that if you vote for Trump, you're a racist. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is Trump's a racist. <laughs> He's the racist. Now you got these white nationalist type people and some of them, they, I mean, they have the same mindset as the Edgar Ray Killings. They have the same mindset. You know, you stay on your side of town, boy, as they would do back in them days and have us people segregated and, and, and disbanded and, and certain rights not given to them. And we're going to tell you how to do things. And, and, if, and, and their version of how to do it is a perverted version of what's in the scriptures. Because I told you their version of Christianity is a perverted version of Christianity is what it is. And it's a shame because they're the main ones that have been in the forefront for years now. They've rose to a head more so it's 2014, 15. This thing has gained steam. And now you have players to where they are all in place to try to infiltrate politics on the highest level so that way they can disrupt your life and make you do what they say do and throw the democracy out throw the you know constitution out throw it all out and they're supposed they're going to lead you and i guess they're going to law you to death to make you people change as i said you can't law i mean it, it, it doesn't matter how many laws you put in place Laws are made to be broken. I mean, because we're, uh, mankind has a sinful nature. We have a sinful nature and we're a propensity to sin and thank God for grace and thank God for the Holy Spirit. And that's what should be convicting us and keeping us in line. And as we talked about the sanctification process, that one goes through when they give their life to Christ. So you can write down all your little laws on the books and try to do this or that. People's going to get around it. You know, you we you know we always talk about this drug war that's been going on for so long. And the simple fix is Americans and people around the world stop using drugs and that'll dry up the cartels. But <laughs> people have they can't. I mean, long as it's going to be there. I mean, until I mean, it, there's some real change starting on the from birth all the way through. I mean, from this education and, and a whole lot of various things. But, you know, some of us, there's people that love to live on the edge. They love to live on the edge and they're going to try the forbidden fruit. And it's going to be drugs and it's going to continue to be drugs, unfortunately. And all you can do is. Try to do your best to make a difference in society. You can't save everybody. I know that you know I, I rub some people the wrong way, the way my approach or however this or that, but I'm not trying to save everybody or worried about big numbers as some of these uh, uh, people that, uh, that are running these ministries or I hear some people say, oh, you don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't care. I don't, you know, I don't care as long as one person Hears me. As long as one person turns that I planted a seed and it turned their help, the Lord watered that and made a difference in their life and turned it around. That's all that matters. My reward is in heaven. I don't care about accolades and everything that you get down here on earth because people are two faced. It. You know, one minute they just like they'll do you like Jesus. They'll love you one minute and then, then the next minute they want to nail you to a cross. So. You see, Edgar Ray Killen lives on, unfortunately. He lives on into what's going on right now. We have it at this level of this nationalism and all of that that's going on in society. The hands made tales they talk about is living on in such a way to where you have to be blind if you don't see it. It's, the, the, it's, it's there. The racism continues. And it continues. Look what they're doing with the, they're pulling the birther and all of the craziness with the vice president right now. It doesn't end. 
it doesn't end. There's always got to be about some type of color and trying to de demonize somebody. And then you get the self-righteous people and these evangelicals that want to do it to fellow people that don't subscribe to their same ideology and, and do that. Whether it's color, their thoughts or whatever, it's to the point where you can't even watch a sports program without these far religious right fanatics getting on your nerves. Can't even watch a basketball game or football. You know, in, in the, I'm going to be watching college football and pro football when the season's starting. I can't wait to start. And guess what? I'm Christian and I'm not less of a Christian because I'm watching a sporting event. But for the, some of them, I mean, their, their lives must be awful. Well, I don't know what it is. They need to get a life is what it is. Many of these people, they don't have no kind of life. I mean, for you to sit there, it must be a drag to always complain and whining and how bad things are just constantly. And is this the end of the world and all of this or that? And I just, oh, if it's so bad in America, won't you pack up, find a way to leave? You know, if it's that bad and you find a way to leave, that's what I would tell you. Get on up out of here then. If it's that bad. I mean, things are not going to be perfect, but these folks, all they live in is doom and gloom. And you see that from many of these self-proclaimed prophets as well. It's always doom and gloom. It's always doom, 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 doom. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Watch your back. This, that, or that. Stock up. Pull your money out the bank. Hey, get into crypto. Do all of these things. These folks will mess your life up. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, let's, we have to continue to pray. We have to continue to pray. Do your little part, each and every one of you out there. You know, no one, like I said, we can't save everybody, but we can make a difference and be, I, no one's going to look at me as some extremist. I don't want someone to look at me as some extremist that I didn't destroy somebody because of my, I'm into conspiracies and way out there and I've got my whole family on board with it. And I've taken everybody down on a sinking ship with the thinking where I'm just way off course and not following the Lord like I'm supposed to be. Don't fall for that trap. Pray for the sermon for some, and, and, and some of these people you're coming across that are telling you some of these wildest uh, uh, conspiracies and their so-called visions and so-called dreams that they're having constantly and all of these things. Beware of these types of people. Please just beware and the Lord will reveal to you what's right and what's wrong. That's all I have for this particular video. Evangelist of God is a channel where we talk about issues the church run away from. Take the devil head off, punch him right in between the chops. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.